100 pounds. Who do you want shot? Big Jim Devine. I want to get her right where she breathes. Jim and I are married for life. You'll never know what that is. You'll die alone. And you'll die sooner than you think. For a decade, Tilly Devine and Kate Lee had battled it out to be the queen of the underworld. And now, Razorhurst was about to explode one last decisive time. Hello, Kate. Life on the coast getting a bit dull for you, was it? Back to play with the big girls. Well, I never left the field. You just took your eye off the ball. Well, you've been playing tit for tat. With Tilly Divine, I've been expanding my horizons. The 50-50 club. Huh. You've been sold a pup, Phil. Keep it. You might want to drop by. See what I've done with the old joint. If you're not too rushed off your feet here. You're not gonna go, are ya? Spitting polish, innit? You trying to impress me? Well, I have to try. Your ear. Lovely voice. And ain't she gorgeous? Yeah. <laughs> I need a drink. Wouldn't spend too much of your hard earned here, Phil. I could have you shut down in the bees dick. So you don't have many friends left in this town. Speaking of friends, you see uh, Edmund over there. Big wig in the city branch of the bank in New South Wales. 
Roland, Randolph, they're brothers. Roland's a barrister, Randolph's a solicitor. And old Nijinsky over there. As Justice Barnes from the Supreme Court, I make some new friends befits my new status. He put three bullets in my chest, Kate. I could crush your penny and pints like fucking grog shops in an eye blink. I want to do you slowly. I watch you wither. I do you nothing but a beggar in the street. I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. I was around long before you. And I ain't going nowhere. Come on, let's get out of here. Risky shit, mate. <laughs> I want to get yourself a new singer there, Kate. That old one. Oh, she's a bit off key. Yes, Coletti. Yeah, and I'll miss you hard by how much. Ed, you better get back to your grapes and your grapefruit. Grapes aren't even in season. Fruits of my past now, Frank. Yeah? Yeah. Come back and see me in the year when you'll still just be a hired hand, still doing what Big Jim tells you to do. I don't work for Jim Devine no more. You kiss his ass for free now, do you, mate? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I hate the prick. And the fact is, I'm planning on shooting Jim Devine first chance I get. Then I'm going to cut the ears off his damnable corpse and I'm going to pin him to the wall in Stanley Street. Come on. I just saw Frank Green. Lucky you. He was looking very flash. You clobber. New watch. He was boasting that he was going to kill Jim. Oh, dear. Is this your doing, Kate? You got your claws into Frank. Bought him off. Poisoned his mind against me. Well, if I had, that would mean that I was using a bloke who you turned into a killer to kill your hubby. <laughs> and wouldn't that be ironic? Frank wants to shoot me. I heard him say so myself. Well, he'll just be joshing. Frank looks up to me. Thinks the sun shines out me bum hole. Nice work, mate. He's not joshing, Jim. I think he switched sides. I think Kate Lee's bought him. This is all your bloody fault. My fault? First thing in the morning, it's Kate Lee. Last thing at night, it's Kate Lee. I told you years ago, you're making a rod for our backs with all your feuding. You wouldn't listen. Now Lee's sick Frank. Oh, quit your fucking whinging. If Frank's seen you for the weakling you really are, then who's to blame him, eh? I'm not the one that scripts shooting Barney Dalton. Weakling, huh? Well, how are we expecting, huh? Oh. Excuse me, Frank? What? Um, Tilly. She wonders if your arm might be on the mend. Oh, it's just, it's been a few weeks since we've seen you. And, and she, she wants me, does she? Yeah, she's short staff from muscle. Well, you tell but... Tilly there's more than one Sheila around here who wants me. Why don't you just bring him like I 
never told you to, you useless ninny. Try. Are you fair person? Hello, Guido. You got a minute? Quite a push you put together. <laughs> Takes a bit of clout. You spotted my talents a long last, have you, Tilly? We've never had much in common, have we, Guido? Sort of moved in different circles. Well, we got something in common now. Frank Green. What about him? Oh, he's pinched your girl and blacked your eye more times than I've had Rumpy Pumpy. I reckon a man of your new stature would be wanting him dead. So do I. had heard that Phil Jeffs was back. And Tilly was never one to look a gift horse in the chompers. It's a nice place, Phil. Fairly classy. But to my mind, you're lacking a certain je ne sais quoi. And what might that be? Little addition to your entertainments. It knocked that slut's shabby saloon right out of the park. Phil entered into a business arrangement. Tilly would provide the 50-50 with her prettiest girls, offering private time to Phil's customers. Phil's cut wasn't huge, but having his club offer girls, as well as grog and gambling and cocaine, was a flanking manoeuvre in his war on Kate. Phil Jeffs is running the 50-50. Place is a den of iniquity. Booze, gambling, snow. And now Tilly Devine's on it supplying the club with her girls. You expect me to do your dirty work? I'm wasting my time. Where's Bill Mackay? I want to speak to the boss. Superintendent Mackay has got security for the bridge opening to supervise. Stuck with me, I'm afraid. Well, then I'm wasting my breath as well. Here, you've commissioned another murder. You tell that little savage Frank Green I'm watching him. Much as I'd like to see him take out Jim Devine, see the whole bang lot of you go out in a hail of bullets, I actually believe the law is worth upholding. <laughs> you sounded just like Bill Mackay then. A poor man's version. Forgive me for talking your business, but if I was going to shoot someone, I wouldn't be all over darling who's talking it up. It's called spooking a It's called being a loose-lipped, loud mouth. You don't bar. speak to me like that. I speak how I fucking want. That's my money you're spending on yourself and your tart. I want Jim Devine dead. He can make it look like a robbery, a break-in, I don't care. I want him dead. As soon as I give me arm strength back. That wing of yours isn't just an excuse, is it, Frankie? You got the guts to kill Big Jim, or don't you? I got the guts, all right. But I'm a professional. And if I'm gonna do this right, I need to be able to hold a gun, I need to be able to throw a punch and take on any of Jim's mates who want to have it. Troubles of me own. Come on, just drink and beer. Stop it. Just drink and beer. Stop it. Stop it. Stop. I'm sorry, Katie. I'm sorry. I'm so useless. I'm 
while you stop playing. Come clean this mess up. I'm sorry, Maisie. What are you staring at? Oh, shoot. Get out. How many times are you going to do this for me? For as long as you keep doing this to yourself. I am going to give up the booze, Katie. This time for sure. Hey, do you remember when we first met? <laughs> He was singing for your supper on Bayswater Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, your voice was so sweet. I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Not oh, that long. Go on, give the verse. Mm. Oh, okay. Thanks, oh. Please. As I went down in the river to pray Studying about that good old way And who shall wear the starry crown Good Lord, show me the way You need a new singer, Katie. I can't do this anymore. <sighs> That's bullshit. No, look at the 50-50 club. That gorgeous girl. You need someone like her, someone young. <sighs> modern. Oh. You must be pissed, because that's the biggest load of bulls wool I ever heard. <laughs> you could sing that smiling coconut off the stage in any country. Hi. <laughs> I need you, Mona. You know that. Sweetheart, I need to be at your best. I know. I'll try again. Promise. I didn't like a tone. I'll tell you that for free. When are you going to kill Jim? <sighs> as soon as this... Stop giving me jip. I've been thinking. And Jim knows I'm after him. What if I front him, say that if he pays me the money I'm owed, I won't knock him? That way I get dosh from him and Tilly, as well as Kate. But you will still kill him. Yeah. Why? Because I want to watch. I've never seen anyone die before. I want to see what it's like to face that darkness, the emptiness. I want to see what it's like taking your very last breath. Guido Coletti wanted to become Australia's Al Capone, but he was a very busy man. Not only had he agreed to kill Frank for Tilly, he was also planning to take over Kate's cocaine trade. Trouble was, he still hadn't figured out how she got her supplies from the wharf. Guido, hello. Where, where have you and your little been this time of night? Oh, she can't sleep. Big pram. Yeah, my ma bought it for me. Five guineas. Five guineas? Jesus, what a devoted grandma that Kayla is, eh? Oh, she's a regular doll. Can I have a hole? Uh, oh, the princess of Darlinghurst, eh? Who's a little princess? What's this poppet's future, eh, Percy? You gonna grow up to be a big, important lady like your grandma? Or is there something else in store for you? I should get her back to bed. I am finished. 
third of May. Yep. Actually, that's for three of nine. Yeah, yeah. What's the matter? I bumped into Quito Coletti. What, did he hurt you? Nah. He picked up Charlotte, though. See, my bet is Kate uses that pram to move her snow. Kate would sell that sprog to white slavers if there was a quid in it. Yeah? Well, they never went nowhere near the docks tonight. Shit. What the hell's he up to? Since when's the saloon served tea? Yes, everything was going swimmingly for Aussie Al Capone. Too bad he'd forgotten about the consorting squad. You bastard, Clinton! We weren't doing nothing! I didn't make the consorting laws, mate. Here's how I see this Guido. You shouldn't have raised a hand to me properly. You shouldn't have raised a hand to me people. You shouldn't have raised anything other than your head to me and mine. <laughs> and you shouldn't have gone near my daughter or granddaughter. stationed along the entry streets. The north and the south? Aye, north and south ends. Every man is drilled, every man is ready for trouble. Then there won't be any. There won't be any. We need this to go well, Bill. I do, you do, God knows the people do. I don't want rat bags of any colour spoiling their day. There won't be any trouble, Mr Premier. announcing the Paramount Sound News. This is Saturday, the 19th of March, 1932. The official opening of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. The arrival of the Premier of New South Wales, the Honourable J.T. Lang. It was a moment the whole country had been anticipating for over a decade. But the ceremony didn't go quite according to plan. The new guardsman, Francis de Groot, appalled that a Labour Premier was doing the honours and not the King, pipped Lang at the post. Luckily, none other than Superintendent Bill Mackay was there to ask him nicely to cease and desist. The ribbon was retied, and Jack Lang eventually got his big moment. The bridge everyone had waited so long for 
was finally open. Sydney Harbour Bridge was more than just a thoroughfare. In the middle of the Great Depression, it was a symbol that the nation, less than four decades old, was growing up. How did that idiot get through? No one knows. It's an extra horseman in the honour guard. But you managed to get him locked up at last. <sighs> He's been brought here as we speak. Throw the fucking book at him. Assault with a deadly weapon. Attempted murder, treason. I want him undrawn and quartered. You know, Mr. Premier, I don't think that's such a good idea. I don't think you're in any position to offer such advice, Bill. The new guard want to appear victimised. They want you acting like a tyrant. The group will have nothing better than for us to make a matter of him. The man waved a bloody sword at my face. I won't just do nothing. I'm not suggesting we do nothing. It should never have been Lang cutting that ribbon. Where was the king, the governor general? Do you feel your message is appreciated by the people of Sydney, Mr. De Groot? <sighs> it was certainly not appreciated by Premier Lang and his communist buddies. <laughs> ah, and uh, what trumped up charges are you bringing against me, uh, Superintendent? None. Mr. De Groot won't be staying with us. I deem this man to be insane. What's this? I'm perfectly sane. Your silly and childish thinks by waving a saber in the air, he officially opened the bridge. I did. I opened it for the, for the decent and loyal citizens of New South Wales. Not fit to go into the cells. Take this man to the mental ward for a proper examination. Francis de Groot was eventually charged with the single offence of damaging government property, one blue ribbon, and fined a week's wages. She rubbed herself along his back and murmured, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, what? I saw your husband there last night, <laughs> having knocking shop. <laughs> there he had two little chicks with nips the size of thumbs. She twiddled them from left to right because it was it's such fun. Oh, shut here. up, sister. Go suck an egg. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> police property to obscene language and resist arrest? Why don't you come in here and see how your kidneys take to being frozen solid? I can provide you with a blanket. Full of vermin and lice, no thanks. Oi! I want to make a phone call. I can make one on your behalf to a lawyer or next of kin. Next of kin will be fine. Call me husband and tell him to bring me fucking fur. No, Mr Devine, I don't know whether she meant her silver fox or her Russian sable. Just... Bring her a coat so I don't have to listen to her complain. So that's what marriage means. A man and bringing your coat when you're cold. Also means a lot of black eyes and heartbreak for Tilly from what I hear. At least she's not alone. Special Sergeant Armfield. Mm. Today's my last day. I'm getting married. But you... Right, uh... Well... I'll be sad to lose an officer so soon after you joined us. But I'm sure marriage will be, um... Will be good for you. Told you. <laughs> Congratulations to both of you. Thanks, Lillian. Sorry, I realise I'm going to probably make your job a lot harder snaffling away one of your new recruits, but <sighs> when it feels right, I'm going to seize the opportunity. <laughs> Tilly. I brought you the white marabou. Well, that might show the dirt. Keeping you in overnight. Do you need anything else? Tilly. 
もうまだRight here. Hey! Hey! Forget it. Forget it. You really gonna do it? Well, I know if I am. Are you really gonna watch? Should get going. My missus will be wondering what I'm up to. Are you a good sort, your lady? The best. <laughs> Mine too. Best girl in the world. Do anything for her. Think she would have worked that out by now, wouldn't you? But no, no, she's just.
Zamix with the bloody rear. Frank turned up to kill me, I just... Oh, whatever's down, Tilly. What happens to us now? Hey, what's, what's going on? You're being released? Hey, Tilly. You're being released, sweetheart. Hey, Tilly girl. We're apples, aren't we, sweetheart? Right as rain, Peachy. When you get bail, I'll send Nugget. Jim was eventually granted bail, but Tilly somehow forgot to send the car for him. So he just hung about Darlinghurst, waiting to see what turned up. Bust put me off having a guy like that. He put me off my game. But as soon as he's bailed, I'm gonna go out there again, and I'm gonna put one right between his eyes this time. You hear me, Nelly? Nelly? Blood. Bray! No! 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 What have you seen him now? What's he give you that I don't? He almost died for me. I would die for you, Nell. I would die. I would kill him first! And then I'd die for you. Please, no! No! Please, no! no. Jesus, Nell. Which one of us do you actually want? Let's settle this, once and for all. over an hour. One of the great stand-up, one-on-one street fights of the era. Of contradicted history. Confusion by formality. No. Please. You gotta... You gotta... Let's solve this like civilized people, eh? Heads, it's Frank. Tails, it's Guido. Jeffs was content to bide his time and watch Kate and Tilly battle. Their war had taken the life of an innocent bystander, and that meant the game was over. Police Commissioner would like a word. So this is where your feuding's brought us to. An innocent man shot to pieces. There's a bridge too bloody far. And it will not happen again on my watch. 
We're not going to go, see. But the city, whatever the law says. So, if you keep, run your sly grogging and you tilly, run your brothels quietly and cleanly, then I will ensure you do so with a minimum of police harassment. But the shootings, the slashings, the mayhem stops. You call off Green, you call off Calais. No one matters as of now for good. So you have a choice, ladies. Behave yourselves. We'll all get along fine. So we have a deal. Where are the guns? Oh, cops took them all. What do you want a gun for? I'm going to kill Kate Lee. Come off the grass. Ah! Get the car. Don't want to be doing this. Get the fucking car. Yeah. Let's settle this. Cemetery at eight. If you've got the guts. Spending the rest of your life in Long Bay. Really? Because I'm partial to seeing you swing. Come on. Then where will that leave us? Hang Joe Rush. <laughs> Ready for any one of those blokes to take our place. I'll make a bloody mess of it. the dead air then. Yeah. You still owe me five bob. You owe me a fucking dog. Once upon a time, there were two rival queens who waged war on each other for so long, they came to realise that while they couldn't live with each other, they couldn't live without each other either. It all happened getting on for a hundred years ago. What became of them, those colourful citizens of Razorhurst? Well, Nellie married Guido, but she left him after only a couple of months. She went back to prostitution, Back to falling in love with bad men who owned her. But no one ever really owned Nellie Cameron. No one ever really knew her, or knew why in just a few years she would put her head in a gas oven. After Nellie dumped him, Guido Coletti went back to the consolation prize of Dulcie Markham. Back to declaring he was going to set up the biggest criminal empire Australia had ever seen. He didn't even see the declaration of World War II. Back at his fruit and veg barrow to make ends meet, he got into one argument too many and came off second best. Frank Green's career as a gunman was pretty much at an end. By World War II, he was reduced to working as a cockatoo for an SB betting shop. By 1956, 
he was dead after a quarrel with his lover. Big Jim Devine was acquitted of taxi driver Fred Moffat's murder, but his chronic gambling and violence were wearing out his welcome in Maroubra. By 1946, Tilly had finally had enough and she divorced him. Heartbroken, Jim moved to Melbourne where he worked as a pub bouncer and ended his days a lonely old man. Phil the Jew's vow to do Kate slowly came to nothing in the end when his gangster past caught up with him. A bullet he'd carried in his gut since 1929 suddenly turned septic and killed him before he was 50. Kate outlasted him, just as she'd promised. Eileen Lee had her fair share of scrapes with the law, including getting done for nicking a fur coat. But perhaps her daughter was the making of her, because she certainly didn't follow in Kate's criminal footsteps. And what of the faithful retainers? Bill the Octopus Flanagan, May Seckold, the man known as Nugget, whose real name may have been Henry Pierce, and Kate's pal, Mona Woods. Who can say? One thing's for sure, they're long dead now. Vale to them all. As for the police, Ray the Blizzard Blissett rose to the rank of superintendent and headed up the consorting squad. He was awarded medals for distinguished service and lived to a ripe old age. Tom Wickham went on to become chief superintendent of the New South Wales CIB. In 1946, he was awarded a King's Medal for distinguished service. Tom's partner, Sid Thompson, left the force under a cloud in the 1950s. The less said, the better. Bill Mackay was a great pragmatist and a great reformer. He almost single-handedly created the New South Wales Police Force. He was also a great boozer. After a decade as commissioner, he died of a heart attack in 1948. Lillian Armfield went on helping fallen women until she retired in 1949, the year after women officers were finally issued uniforms. She died alone in her one-room flat aged 86. So that left just Kate and Tilly. New generations muscled in on them. Laws were passed against them. And the real scourge of all gangsters, the tax man, inevitably came knocking. No! Neither woman ever recaptured the glory days of the 20s. Their roaring days were over. Kate kicked the bucket at 84. Hundreds came to her funeral to say goodbye. When poor old Tilly passed away six years later, there was barely a soul to shed a tear. But never before or since has the underworld in Sydney, in Australia, or anywhere, been so dominated by just two people and two women at that. Long live Queen Kate. Long live Queen Tilly. <laughs>